Welcome, everyone. Hello, bonjour. Welcome, everyone. Bienvenue à tous. Thank you for joining us today on National Human Trafficking Awareness Day. We're pleased to be launching Inside Human Trafficking in Canada, a seven-part podcast series co-created by the Manitoba Advocate for Children and Youth and Youth Troopers for Global Action. My name is Dr. Carly Sapoznik Evans, and I am the Manager of Research and Quality Assurance at NISI. It's been my honor and privilege to serve as host of this podcast, speaking with lived experience leaders and experts from across Canada and fielding questions from youth about human trafficking issues and possible solutions. Most Canadians think that human trafficking is an issue affecting people beyond our borders. It is a tragic reality that Canada is a source, transit, and a destination country for the human trafficking of children for the purposes of commercial sexual exploitation, forced labor, and forced marriage. Part of the Manitoba Advocates mandate is to educate the public about children's rights. As such, when Youth Troopers for Global Action approached us to collaborate on this project to increase awareness of the magnitude of human trafficking in Canada, we enthusiastically agreed. To this end, we are going to be recording this morning's launch for possible replays on our respective social media and YouTube channels. I'd now like to invite Elder May Louise Campbell to open up today's launch in a good way with a prayer. Thank you very much, Carly, for inviting me. I'm very happy to be a part of this wonderful uh, uh, information that you're sending out today. Uh, about human trafficking and uh, I've been it's been a, a big part of uh, who I am as as a grandmother and uh, as a mother and uh, uh, as an indigenous woman and for many many years I have been working with women who have been trafficked so it gives me a great honor to be part of this today thank you I have my smudge going and of course it's important to bring our sacred medicines into anything that we share and do. So I'm smudging myself uh, before I, uh, I, I do the prayer. So here we are uh, uh, once again, and many times recently talking about the trafficking of, of our women and children. And it's something that is very troubling to my heart and continues to be because there seems to be, it seems to continue to happen uh, and, and, and getting worse, not getting better. So my prayer is to creator, to our creator <clears throat> and to our ancient grandmothers and grandfathers who were the teachers of being a true human being many, many centuries ago. I bring their teachings to my own heart and to my spirit as to the teachings of the sacredness of our children and the sacredness of our women, which has been forgotten in today's world. I ask Creator, why is this happening? Why does this continue to happen? Why is it Creator that the human race have changed so rapidly in the direction that is so wrong? And so evil, I think, sometimes, because the children continue to be trafficked, women continue to be, to be devalued and shamed and forced into, into prostitution and addictions. Why is this happening today in a world that is supposed to be more intelligent, more creative, more hum humanity? All of those things are we're supposed to be growing in the hearts of humans around the world. Why is it greater that it is not? Humans have become more evil in their thoughts about what is right and what is wrong. Our children are sacred. Why have they forgotten that? Why is this it continue to happen? I ask these questions because it's very puzzling to those of us who work diligently to protect our children and to protect our women and to try to do things 
that will <clears throat> that will will stop this madness. That's what it is. It's an evil madness. We must stop it. How do we do that? <clears throat> we ask to you to give us the strength and the courage and the wisdom that is needed to change the minds of all humans, all humans who sometimes are ignorant of what is really happening out there. All humans are responsible to stand up and stop this madness of bringing horror and trauma and evil to our women and our children. This has to stop. We ask you, Creator, to open our hearts and the minds of all of the people all over the world, and especially here in Canada, our beautiful country. We need help in our minds. We need our minds to be changed to seeing the truth and the reality of the disgrace and the evil that continues to happen to our children and our women. I say miigwech, ah miigwech, ah miigwech. Thank you. <coughs> miigwech. Thank you, Elder Me Louise. Macy and YTGA acknowledge that our work takes place on traditional Indigenous territories in Manitoba and Ontario. Macy acknowledges that the mandate of our office extends across the province that is now called Manitoba. As an office, we live and work on the original lands of the Anishinaabek, Anish Anin Awak, Dakota Oyate, Dene Sulin, and Nehe Tobuk. We also acknowledge part of Manitoba is located on the beautiful homeland of the Red River Metis. We strive to contribute to improving lives by listening to children and youth, ensuring diversity in our team, consulting and seeking wisdom beyond ourselves, always learning and growing towards reconciliation and collaboration. YTGA acknowledges that it is located on the traditional territory of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. YTGA honors the contributions made by First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people who have cared for these territories and continue to shape, strengthen, and preserve this country, province, and these regions. In particular, YTGA acknowledges and honors the territory of the Anishinaabek, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe Chippewa peoples, the land that is home to the Métis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississauga of the Credit First Nation. By acknowledging traditional Indigenous territories, we recognize contemporary and historical Indigenous presence and land rights, and the continued impacts and legacies of colonialism. As noted, today is National Human Trafficking Awareness Day in Canada. Across our country, young people, along with lived experience leaders and social justice advocates, We'll be recognizing this day with events and calls to action to combat this form of modern slavery that is alive and well in Canada. Please make use of the chat feature to talk with us and one another. If you have any questions during today's launch event, please type them into the Q&A box in your Zoom control panel. I'll either raise the question at an appropriate time during the presentation or at the end during the question period. Without further ado, it's now my pleasure to introduce our guest experts in alphabetical order. Here on behalf of Ainsley Crone is Maria Gadoy, Acting Deputy Manitoba Advocate for Children and Youth. Maria was born and raised in Argentina and moved to Canada when she was 14 years old. She began her role at Macy as a researcher. She has published numerous reports on human rights issues affecting children and youth in Manitoba, including youth homelessness, solitary confinement in custody, infant mortality, and beyond. Maria has a master's in science in social policy and intervention from the University of Oxford. She is a passionate advocate for children's rights. For over 87 years, Elder Melanie Campbell has dedicated her life to the service of others. She was the keeper of Grandmother Moon Lodge, a healing lodge in Manitoba, that served thousands of, thousands of Indigenous women and girls nationally, as well as the elder in residence at Red River College. She now works with Mount Carmel Clinic and sits on Winnipeg's Indigenous Advisory Circle. 
She is the co-founder of Clan Mothers Healing Village, a safe space that provides support to victims of multi-generational trauma, sexual violence, sexual exploitation, and human trafficking, including leadership opportunities to help women reintegrate back into their communities and society with a refined and growing skill set. Great White Owl Women, Elder Lori McKenzie, was a member of the Canadian Women's Foundation's National Task Force on Sex Trafficking of Women and Girls in Canada. She is a survivor of sex trafficking and a graduate of the Nadinui Child and Youth Care Certificate Program at Red River College in Manitoba. As she emphasizes, and I quote, all stages of change, shapes, and sizes of people belong. The Indigenous model of understanding is premised on inclusivity and togetherness. This means embracing diversity, respecting intersectionality, and honoring the vast variability, variability in life experiences of persons with lived experience, end quote. And last but not least, Livin Mohammed occupies the program manager position at YTGA. She graduated from Ryerson University in 2016, where she completed a bachelor's degree in their four-year child and youth care program. And she is currently pursuing a one-year project management certificate at Sheridan College. She is co-producer of Inside Human Trafficking in Canada. Since November, 2018, Livin has developed, supervised and hosted a number of social justice and art-based programs and events with YTG. They include Critical Conversations, How Anti-Black Racism Operates in Canada, Seniors and Youth Connect, Mosaic of Mississauga, Melanin Magic, 2019 and 2020, Julia Barnes and the Great Environmental Scandal and Beyond. Welcome Maria, Elder May Louise, Elder Lori and Levin. Elder May Louise, we will start with you. Why is this podcast important from an Indigenous matrilineal teaching and healing perspective? Ah, that's a, a very important question. Yeah, it's extremely important we, because we must again speak the truth around the world. We must again give, uh, because of what has happened when it comes to residential school and colonization, so much has been removed from the, from the minds, so much truth has been removed from the minds of our people many years ago, over and over again, and now we know it's generational. <clears throat> so here we are now at this time where we have more children in care than ever before why we have more women uh, that have been, uh, had their children taken and uh, as a result end up on the streets and are addicted to drugs and alcohol. Many of our men also are experiencing the same things because of residential school and colonization. The way our people thought before any contact at all, <laughs> you know, it was a beautiful way of life. And so this is what's missing and this is what's not being taught in the education systems or all the other places that systems that have been set up by government to help indigenous peoples. Well, the truth is they are not helping indigenous peoples because they're still creating methods of their way of thinking. Our way of thinking is no longer in, in us anymore. And in our elders, we were struggling to keep those teachings alive and well. And we are, are, are also moving to a place where they're disappearing. And so we can't let that happen. And, and finally, the truth and reconciliation I say, uh, 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 information that has brought, been brought forward is saying, no, it has to stop. We have to begin to speak the truth that the education system and so on. So our children will begin to know the truth of who they really are. It's not happening. So that's why it's so important. The matri matrimonial teachings and healing perspective must be 
acknowledged, must be honored as the reality and truth of who we are in our hearts, in our minds, in our bodies, in our spirits as Indigenous peoples. Many of our children, we know, have an identity crisis. They have no idea who they are. They have no idea enough generations, even in my generation. I did not know. And I'm 87, and it goes back further than myself even. My mother didn't know. My grandmother didn't know. So how much have we lost? And those teachings are spiritual. I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's our connection to the land that brings us to the truth of who we are as Indigenous people. And that's, the, that's what's missing. You know, I think often uh, describe this saying that I say over and over again that was made years ago by one of our elders. And it says, whatever happens to the mother who is the earth mother, whatever happens to her will happen to the children of the earth. Now, our connection to the earth was a very powerful one. That is who, who created us as we are true indigenous ways of thinking and being and doing. We had no trouble or no, no loss of identity because we knew exactly who we were. Our grandmothers were the teachers in our communities. We didn't have books and Bibles to teach us. We had our earth mother and all our relations that taught us how to be, how to be as human. And that's to understand this beautiful spiritual connection that we are all part of the universe. Part, we are one with the, the Earth Mother. We are one with every living thing. And that's how we saw ourselves as, as people who walked on this earth and, and are told that everything that we need to survive is provided to us by our beautiful Earth Mother. Who, who looked after us by the water, by the, the standing tall, by the creatures of the earth, by everybody, gave us everything that we needed. And that was reality, that was truth to us. So now the podcast, when we talk about those teachings, that's what they are, that's what kept us. Our, our young people knew exactly who they were, they knew their place in the earth and they knew their gifts, they knew why they were there and why they were alive and their, their part in, in the community. They knew that. And all, and then it happened. And then everything was taken from us, from the mines in the residential schools. I, I, I don't want to go into that because it, it's, they're horror stories. Totally, they're horror stories. They were evil places that did great damage to our, 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 our children when they were there, great damage. And, uh, and so they're struggling. They're struggling trying to find out what happened, who am I, what's my direction. I have no sense of self. And, uh, and as much as uh, the systems out there are trying to, to, to help, it's unfortunately it's still doing damage and I have to be honest and truthful to say that because I know I've been working many years already in some of these systems so I know uh, so the the, uh, the the healing and the matriarchal teachings uh, and the healing pers perspective is what is missing I've worked in them so when you go there to work and they say they want to indigenize now, that's the big word, indigenize the systems. <laughs> but you can't do something that you know nothing about. And, and, and sometimes I think it, uh, they, the, the academic mind won't allow something that's so simple and sacred to take over how they think. It's nothing that's academic. It's nothing that is, is, it has to do with, uh, with, uh, with uh, you know, the, the scientific methods and all of that kind of stuff of being human. It has nothing to do with that. It has something to do with the body, mind, spirit, and soul of being human. And 
uh, they're not, the, the education system doesn't do that for our children. And that's why the clan mother's healing village is so important because it will bring that from the, from the, from the buildings, from the taking down of the other buildings and putting up the new buildings, every part of it will be what we call indigenized. And so just that alone, that process alone will create an energy you see that should be in the systems that are out there now, but the systems that are out there now don't carry that kind of energy. It's about I'm right and you're wrong and we're gonna teach you what we think you should be. Not about, we'll teach you to go into your soul and the deepest part of your spirit to teach you to be, to know who you really are, not what we want you to be. To discover your own beauty and your own person and to have a relationship with the true nature of being human by knowing that it has to do with the spiritual essence of who you are. Thank so, you so much, uh, Elder Me Louise. Elder Lori, why is this podcast important from a lived experience leader perspective? Thank you. Um, it's important from a lived experience uh, perspective to understand that the youth involved with sexual exploitation um, when we speak with them, particularly in Manitoba, we have a high representative Aboriginal youth involved. And they've shared with us that reconnecting with their culture and access to elders is something that's needed and absence in their lives right now. And they also um, work well. We have 30 years of uh, trial runs to that hiring people with lived experience to work with this population works really well with the youth and actually um, they, because we understand where the youth come from and also what's keeping them there because we've been there and um, they're more willing to discuss things with us because we understand it in a different level than someone who's never been out there and has never had those experiences and especially the trauma involved from it. A lot of the youth won't even identify that there's much trauma in their lives right now involving this sexual exploitation because of the way they're groomed to be initiated in it or it's to stay involved in it, or if they have addictions to drugs or alcohol, which clouds their minds where they're not able to think clearly. Because we have to remember children and youth um, can't consent to this. And even if they're advertising and phoning you, it's the adults have to stand up and say no and protect these children from the ones that are, are abusing them. We have to get better at uh, giving them protection from people who abuse them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder Lori. Maria, turning to you now, why is this podcast important from a children's rights perspective? Thank you, Carly, and thank you, Elder May Louise, um, for, for opening up uh, in a good way. Um, uh, as the Office of the Manitoba Advocate for Children and Youth, it's our legislated responsibility to raise awareness and understanding of the United Nations Convention of the Rights of the Child. So the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child is an international treaty that articulates the civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights of all children. Canada ratified the UNCRC in 1991, and in so doing, governments at all levels have committed to protecting the human rights of all children, including Article 35, under which governments must protect children from human trafficking. So ultimately, this podcast does two things. Um, we hope it does two things. The first one is make children and young people aware that they have rights and also hold governments accountable to their commitment to protecting those human rights. So this right is currently under threat in Canada 
and Manitoba. With more than one in five reported victims of human trafficking in Canada being girls under the age of 18. Our office advocates for children and youth uh, and young adults who are being trafficked for the purpose of sexual exploitation on a daily basis through our advocacy services program. Exploitation has become increasingly more internet based with estimates of 90% occurring online, meaning that approximately 10% of sexual exploitation takes place in a visible manner, um, such as on the streets. Examples we see regularly include online luring and grooming via websites, social media, and apps at school, at restaurants, malls, and stores where they can access the internet, and also by family members, friends, and peers, and in hotels. So the children, youth, families, and community organizations and service providers we work with continue to report system gaps, particularly when co-occurring risk factors are at play. This includes young people with cognitive vulnerabilities, trauma in their childhood, mental health challenges, and substance misuse. For example, we know that methamphetamine or meth use has increased significantly here in Manitoba and beyond and traffickers use, are using math to lure ch children and, and youth. I want to emphasize that trafficking of young people results in permanent impact on, um, on and a lifelong impact on the individuals involved. This is why education about human trafficking is so critical. Um, so to this end, um, we have launched and, and two special reports that focus on this issue, both of which are available on our website. Um, they include In Need of Protection, Angel Story, as well as A Place Where It Feels Like Home, the story of Tina Fontaine. Um, by law, under the Advocate for Children and Youth Act, the Manitoba Advocate is empowered to issue formal recommendations to the Manitoba government and government systems and other public bodies to improve the effectiveness and responsiveness of services provided to children, youth, and their families. Our office has made several recommendations that we continue to monitor on the issue of trafficking of young people for the purpose of commercial sexual exploitation. And these include developing a protocol to ensure that response plans are created for missing youth receiving child welfare services particularly those at high risk of being trafficked, expanding services for youth trafficked for the purpose of sexual exploitation and evaluating Manitoba's strategy to prevent sexual exploitation and sex trafficking, developing trauma prevention and response to adverse childhood experiences that are risk factors for sexual exploitation, educating service providers and the public and creating interventions. Um, finally, um, we also have two recommendations that are specific to reviewing and reforming the addition treatment programs for children and youth, as well as denouncing sexual exploitation of children and youth and raising awareness through a public education campaign. Um, as a part of our responsibility, uh, these reports do not sit on shelves. Uh, we follow up and monitor these recommendations and action taken towards those recommendations. So as of our last compliance report released in 2021, December, the government of Manitoba has a 58% compliance rate with recommendations focused on sexual exploitation. So finally, most Canadians do not know how to spot the signs that someone is a victim of trafficking or how to respond. There are many myths and misconceptions about human trafficking, but we need to realize this happens everywhere and takes many different shapes and forms. What's more, we all have a collective responsibility to uphold children's rights, including rights to safety and protection. We touch on many different solutions to end human trafficking throughout the course of the seven podcast episodes. Perhaps most importantly, we talk about the need for collaboration be it between system service providers, lived experience leaders, and our Canadians in general. As a first step, I invite listeners to subscribe to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Last but not least, Levin, 
Why is this podcast important from a youth engagement perspective? No worries. Thank you so much, Carly. And before I begin, I just want to say that I am extremely humbled to be part of this panel that's filled with all of our incredible guest speakers. So thank you so much, especially as somebody who is continuously learning about human trafficking themselves. So as for this question, in terms of the beginning stages of developing inside human trafficking in Canada, we knew that we wanted to integrate like a youth segment where we were able to hear from the youth directly. Because all across Canada and all across the world, there are youth victims, there are youth survivors, and there are youth at risk who currently may or may not be aware of it especially in the age of the pandemic and because of the increase in online activity, as Maria has said just previously. Um, the podcast brings human trafficking to the forefront as, is in, as it is an issue that exists within the country, but also amongst us. So this also destroys the misconception that I know I personally had as a younger person, where I thought human trafficking didn't exist in Canada, but it does, it exists in Manitoba, it exists in Toronto, it exists in Mississauga where I currently reside, um, all across the Canada and all across the world. So it definitely impacts everyone regardless of who they are. So that means in terms of age, gender, race, economic status, and it may in fact impact people that you may know in your lives, such as family members and people that you may know in school or work. So it's insidious, it's sudden, and it's devastating, which is why including this youth perspective and voice is paramount in not only spreading awareness, but in also providing youth with an accessible platform, such as Inside Human Trafficking Canada, where they can ask questions to lived experience leaders and experts on the front line, such as yourself, Ainsley, and Maria, and Elder May Louise, and Elder Lori. So they can ask these questions that they're curious about and they would like answers to. So hearing these inquiries and gaining an understanding of what they're curious about and the areas that need to be filled, um, we are able to motivate and inspire mobilization to secure, hopefully, um, future funding for survivors and victims, as well as promoting um, future research. So that's the aim that we have with this podcast. And to clarify, this conversation, of course, doesn't only lie with youth. And we all have responsibility, as Maria said, in terms of the eradication of human trafficking across the globe. But youth should definitely have a place at the table, as is, it is an issue that really directly affects them. And also, they deserve to have a voice and use their voice in a way that they're most comfortable with in order to directly address human trafficking. Thank you so much, Levin. Well said. Youth have a voice and a place at the table. 100%. I now invite everyone to listen to the podcast trailer. There will also be a link in the chat that you can play. The time is right. The time is now. This is our opportunity, and we had better be on it and take it and run with it. Hello and welcome to Inside Human Trafficking in Canada, a podcast focused on ending trafficking and upholding children's rights. This podcast series is brought to you by the Manitoba Advocate for Children and Youth and Youth Troopers for Global Action. My name is Dr. Carly Saposnik Evans, and I'm a human rights advocate based in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Join me as I talk to lived experience leaders and experts from across Canada in seven of the episodes. We'll answer questions from youth, debunk myths about human trafficking, and hear solutions to help end this egregious crime. Canada is a source, a transit, and a destination country for human trafficking for the purposes of commercial sexual exploitation, forced labor, and forced marriage. These all uh, situations intersect contract of marriage um, is used as the vehicle for trafficking. It, it, and grooming happens in multiple ways. It's not just kidnapping and force, nor is it solely Romeo Pimps, right? Family members, friends of family, a youth or a young adult's peers can also be responsible for recruitment into the sex industry. Um, so I think it's really important to just be aware. So collaboration really is the only way I think that we can, rather than saying, problems or one one sector's responsibility. I think it's very important to shift that responsibility into the middle where we all share responsibility. Inside Human Trafficking in Canada launches February 22nd, 2022 on National Human Trafficking Awareness Day. 
Subscribe now on your favorite podcast platform and learn more online at insidehumantraffickingcanada.wordpress.com. These are real people. This is not just a podcast. Together, we will get educated to stop exploitation. Thank you, Jessica. If you want to make sure you don't miss an episode of this podcast, please subscribe. If you want to find us on social media, we are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we're using the hashtag Inside Human Trafficking to share podcast information. We'd love to hear what you think of the podcast, and if you have any questions about human trafficking that you'd like us to ask upcoming guests. We now have some time for questions. You can either use the raise hand on Zoom feature, which I see as uh, someone has already done, or let us know you have a question and voice it out loud or type uh, out your question using the Zoom question panel below. Um, so let's open up the floor now. And I see that Norma McDonald has a question. Go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to say hello to Elder May Louise and, uh, and Lori. And thank you very much for being there. This is really important for us to uh, uh, deepen and realize and make concrete in our lives in Canada. Um, and for me, um, May Louise, you are a, an absolute mentor for me. You know that, and I love you very much. And Lori, um, you too have, as a as a, a woman of experience, you have a lot to um, a lot to teach us, and we need to really listen carefully in order to do that. So thank you very much for being there. Carly too, um, thank you for um, instigating this and doing all the research. I know it's something that's very dear to your heart for, for many, many years. Um, even back to when we went to Africa, um, to Mali, you really had the passion to find out what was going on for trafficking, especially of children. So thank you all. Thank you very much, Norma. Um, so just to, Add to that, yes, when a team of us went to Mali, um, and you'll hear more about forced labor in one of the upcoming episodes, um, we were on the, near the border with Ivory Coast, where unfortunately children are being trafficked for the purpose of forced labor on cocoa plantations, uh, which ends up becoming chocolate. Um, so one thing to keep your eye out on uh, in future podcasts coming up in a series here. All right, are there any other questions? If you have one, please raise your hand or enter it into the Q&A or the chat box. All right, well, I, um, oh, there's a, yeah, we have one more question, yeah. We already have that one. Good. Well, I don't see other, any other questions. And so I, um, if you do have others um, later on, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, there's a comment just here saying, great job. Excited to check out the first episode. Thank you very much, Whitney. Um, so I want to now uh, thank all of, the, all of today's guests again, Maria Godoy, Elder Elise Campbell, Elder Lori McKenzie, and Livin Muhammad. I also want to thank the podcast producers, Libin Mohammed, Anne Marie Gott Stevenson, and Anthua Borolias from YTGA, and Jessica Botello Urbanski from Macy. Special thanks also go to Darshan Dorka from Next Stanza for audio mixing, to Daniel Chavez from Cise Puede Productions for audio mixing and our studio setup in Winnipeg, and to podcast guests you will meet in future episodes, Kelly Talon Franklin. Michael Sacco, Shelley Gilbert, Deepa Matu, Bob Christmas, and Mimi Shameen Brown. Contact information for both Macy and YTGA will be shared in the chat shortly, should you have any follow-up questions or wish to get in touch with us. I'm Dr. Carly Saplasnik evans Thank you for joining us. Please visit our podcast website at insidehumantraffickingincanada.wordpress.com to listen to the first episode of Inside Human Trafficking in Canada, which is now available. Stay tuned for the remaining six episodes, which will be airing weekly every Tuesday. Together, we will get educated to stop exploitation. 
I now welcome back Elder Mulevis Campbell to honor the learning and sharing that has taken place here by closing things off in a good way. Thank you, Tala. <clears throat> Thank you for everybody that to, took part in this today and from each one of us and how we feel and how we present uh, what we know, uh, we learn from each other. And uh, it was nice to hear from the child advocates uh, as well and, uh, and all the information that they have gathered uh, to really look at uh, the truth about uh, uh, you know, the trafficking of our children. And uh, the more we know uh, is good, but I think uh, uh, the more we uh, <laughs> the more we become more responsible to trying to put a stop to what is happening. Uh, and I like when all everybody seemed to agree that it's the responsibility of every human, not just those of you who work there in those systems. Uh, but it's the responsibility of every human being. Many families out there who have children who are now, um, you know, having having what I call uh, the ability to be able to have cell phones, and uh, and and, uh, and 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 you know, and uh, we know there's a lot of very difficult messages that uh, come to children through those cell phones. And uh, that's, that's dangerous. With the intelligence and technology that is available today, I believe that they could do more than they're doing now to stop that from happening. It's a crime, it's criminal. And so why can't these big, huge companies stop that? There has to be more push in that direction. The other part I wanna pray for because when I'm looking at the screen and all the people that work in this systems, I'm seeing mostly women. You, the women, are working at trying to bring more attention to what is happening to our children. You are the mothers, the grandmothers, the aunties, and we're all working so hard. My prayer would be to the creator, to the minds of men. They are the abusers. <clears throat> The men are the abusers. That's reality, that's fact. And what we need, Creator, is for the men to wake up something in their hearts and in their minds to understand that they, it's the men who traffic our children. It's the men who harm our children. It's the men who are being terrible to the women. It's got to stop. Nothing in this, in this world will change until the men take their responsibility. So I pray that there will be some miracle happen to wake up the men and they get on board to make this stop around the world. Here in Canada, here in Manitoba, around the world. They have to step up and take that responsibility. Because with, if this did not happen, we would not have this problem. If the men were not the ones that trafficked and, and desired sex from children, this would not be happening today. So please create our help us in that area. Wake up the minds and the hearts of these men to see reality and truth. I say that, big witch, uh, big witch. Thank you, Elder May Louise, and to all of you for attending today's launch. Take care. Thank you.